This week on TGC News, the NRA ILA gets a new app, another crappy holster, and Silencer Shop drops a load on the ATF. The Shooting Club is a brand new mobile app that brings shooters together. Whether it's at your local range or at a private club, you can use their official targets to compete against your friends all over the world and have chances to win cash and prizes no matter what your score. You just download the free app, sign up, get your targets, and start shooting to win. You can even join the gun collective group that I started and shoot against me and other TGC fans. To learn more, hop on the Apple or Google App Store and download the free app now. Welcome back. My name is John Patton, and I get comments all the time about people wanting to work with me, for me, whatever. Well, boys and girls, now is your chance. I am looking for a camera operator. There are a few requirements, obviously. First, you must live near or be willing to relocate to the zip code 19369 or the surrounding area. Second, you must be as good as me with a camera or better. Sorry for those of you that are inexperienced, but I need talent. Quality is a key point of TGC, right? This is not your normal nine to five job, so be ready to hustle. If you are interested, you need to email me your resume and examples of your work to theguncollective at gmail.com. I can't wait to see what you guys got. Now, this week's first story on the topic of gun-related apps, the NRA ILA is seeming to come out of the dark ages with a new app that seeks to encourage people to push back against the nonsense they're fighting every day. For those of you that are unaware, the NRA and the NRA ILA, or Institute for Legislative Action, are two separate things. The ILA is really where all the lobbying and fighting against BS gun laws happen. That being said, the new app seems to be a good way to bring people together and push in a common direction. I think that's smart. I mean, really, it's been necessary for a few years now, and it's good that they're finally doing it. Every time you complete a certain action suggested in the app, like calling a representative or sharing a story about gun rights or whatever it might be, it gives you a certain amount of points, which don't really matter, but encourages people to help. My biggest issue with this setup, not surprisingly, it's nothing but NRA content. I mean, don't get me wrong, the NRA makes some great stuff with people like Colian Noir, who is on fire lately, and all the other commentators, but there are so many other good people speaking out that it's a damn shame that they aren't pushing anything but NRA stuff. Like I said, I'm not surprised, but I wish the NRA and the NRA ILA actually backed people like myself Mac, IV8888, and other great content creators that regularly speak out for gun rights. I'll continue to support what they do because I believe in the core of their message, and I wholeheartedly believe that we need these kinds of groups leading the charge in DC. What do you guys think? Are you going to get this app and actually use it? And in I've missed talking about crappy holsters news, a new challenger appears. <laughs> It's been a while since I've talked about bad holsters, and thanks to my buddy Nathan Schultz, I found another one. Let me just start by showing you the first five seconds of what is possibly the worst product video I've seen by a company ever. Hi, my name is Brandon Scott, and I am the designer of the Brave Response holster. Brave Response, huh? All right, well, let's see what this thing's all about. Now I know this is gonna be a game changer for you. Finally, a holster that will help you balance comfort with concealability in a way that you can carry every day. Basically, it's an elastic band that has an Uncle Mike's holster sewn to it because this guy says that normal inside the waistband Kydex holsters are bulky. <laughs> I wasn't aware that adding less than a centimeter to the outside of your gun is considered bulky, but okay, fine. How does the retention work? Seriously. A nylon strap. That's what you got. So we've got a really flexible holster with questionable trigger guarding and a nylon strap. And he says that most of his customers actually wear it in the same damn location as a normal holster. I mean, listen, dude, I get it. I don't have much of a rear end to help hold up my pants or a gun either. And I get that if it's strong enough, an elastic bend might be able to help take the weight of your gun off your pants. But at that point, why not just get this. It's the Crossbreed Modular Belly Band. It uses a Velcro-back Kydex holster to properly retain and protect the gun. 
Well, maybe I'm being harsh and this Brave Response turd is actually really cost effective. I wonder how much it is. Oh, it's 70 bucks. And how much is that crossbreed setup with a proper Kydex holster? Oh, that's also 70 bucks. Well, I think that answers the question itself. The Brave Response holster earns itself a place in bed idea land along with the handgun sling and whatever other garbage I've covered on the show here. This is what happens when your friends aren't honest with you. Silencer Shop, a company best known for disrupting the suppressor industry a few years ago and continuing to push boundaries, has just put the entirety of their d on the table at the ATF. Take a look at this picture. Nothing too special, right? Just a bunch of boxes. Look again. That is over 1,200 pounds of Form 4s and trusts being sent to the ATF on the eve of ATF 41F. Holy sh! The value in tax stamp fees alone is over $2 million. And assuming they're all four suppressors, that breaks down to 10,000 stamps. This is the largest amount of forms ever sent to the ATF at one time. It's absolutely astonishing. And here's another really interesting fact. According to the firearm blog, Silencer Shop is currently processing 49% of all Form 4 applications nationwide. Holy sh! again! People were submitting forms like crazy leading up to 41F, and I'll tell you guys that this is a good thing. Not necessarily because of the money being pumped into the government that doesn't really end up at the NFA branch, but more so because it shows us that the suppressor industry is alive and well and continues to grow at an alarming rate. I think we can all agree that having to get permission from the government to own one is stupid, but they are certainly becoming more commonplace, and as our generation continues to grow within the firearms industry, it will continue to flourish. I mean, hell, I'm going hunting for Russian boar this coming weekend with a suppressed 500 Magnum rifle, because there is no reason not to shoot suppressed when you're hunting. And for those of you that still have no idea what ATF 41F is, you can go check out The Legal Brief, a new show here on TGC that breaks down myths and misinformation on gun laws. Now, you need to check out the company featured in the break and stick around for this week's Friendly Fire. The Scarging Handle from Kinetic Development Group offers an ergonomic way to manipulate your FN Scar rifle. Able to be used on both sides of the gun as well as flipped upside down for a different angle of approach, this textured contoured handle is brand new from KDG. To get 10% off your entire order on KineticDG.com, use the code TGC10. This week's friendly fire question is from Jason Bacon on the TGC Facebook page. Really? Bacon? That's incredible. And he asked, if you could bring back any firearm that's out of production, what would it be? <laughs> oh, man. J Jason, thank you for the question. This is a really good one. I have a few that come to mind, like the LAR Grizzly in 50 AE. It's basically a giant 50 cal 1911. Really cool. Or the Ruger Deerfield Carbine or 9944 or maybe even the AMT Automag in 30 carbine. I, I like these weird off the wall guns that never really took off. And of course, I would have to bring back the Colt Python. How about you guys? My friendly fire question is the exact same question to you guys. What gun would you bring back into production? Let me know your answer down in the comments, and if you want your question answered right here on TGC News, you can post that on facebook.com slash the gun collective. You can send it to me on Snapchat or post it on Instagram and tag me. And unfortunately, guys, that is it for this week's show. You know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. Hit that like button, share it with your friends, be a good guy, help a brother out. And if you didn't enjoy it, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.